past half hour, world leaders have adopted a new set of UN goals aimed at alleviating poverty. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, are the successors of the Millennium Development Goals, which are due to expire at the end of the year. Let's take a look at them now. The Millennium Development Goals are about to expire, and it's fair to say that they were a mixed success. The goals on poverty and clean water were met ahead of time, but others fell short. Now the UN's got an even more ambitious set of goals for the next 15 years, the global goals. So what are they? Well, there's 17 of them in total, but in short, they're all about peace, planet and prosperity. They don't just cover poverty and health either. There's now a bigger focus on things like justice and jobs. And this time around, they're aimed at all countries, not just the poorest ones. Critics say there are simply too many targets and that some of them can't be measured. For example, the goal to end discrimination in all its forms against women. There's also the danger that countries will pick and choose which goals they want to meet. But supporters say the ambitious goals are still worth working towards, even if not all of them are met. Well, eradicating extreme poverty and hunger is one of the key goals being discussed in New York. But is there anything that those affected can do to help themselves out of the situation? BBC Africa's Anne Soy has been to northern Kenya to see how a community that had been relying on food relief has now taken control of their land and turned their livelihoods around. <laughs> A busy morning at Naweyoi as a group of 350 families work together to grow food. They've been doing this for two years now, and they have created an oasis of greenery in a vast arid part of the country where people have always been at the mercy of extreme weather conditions. <laughs> During farming, our animals don't have anything to eat. They die in large numbers. Even the owners die because there's nothing to eat. And yet, this is a place that's endowed with immense natural resources, oil, water aquifers, and even this river. Among the Turkana in northern Kenya, wealth is measured in the number of livestock one has. The more you have, the wealthier you are. They're traditionally pastoralists. That means they travel long distances to look for pasture for their treasured animals. But at times, because of recurrent drought, they have lost their animals and sometimes their lives. And that has forced them to rethink their way of life. With the help of the United Nations Development Program and the governments of Japan and Kenya, they've begun irrigating 200 acres of land. The families are already reaping the benefits of agriculture. Their livestock now have to get used to feeding from their sheds. Now I can feed my family on a variety of food. We sell the surplus at the market and I have been able to send my children to school. Each family manages a portion of the irrigation scheme. Their livelihood is now in their hands. If you don't work hard, then you don't reap what you expect. When others will be harvesting, then you remain without food and wait for the general food distribution. And nowadays, yeah, even one food program has uh, withdrawn from uh, giving out relief food. But the lasting relief for them is the ability to get food when they need it, the whole year round. That's something to celebrate. And so, BBC News, Turkana. And a little later in the program, I'll be speaking.